we'll hear a woman booking a room for a party at a community centre. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. Now the test will begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hi, good morning. My name's Pete. How can I help you? Hi, my name's Maria Lincoln. I understand you hire out rooms in the community center as venues for parties. Yes, we do. We vary a sized accommodation. It depends on what you're looking for, really. We're looking to hold a party, a children's birthday party, and we need a room that will hold about seventy people, with space for a small disco area, games, dancing, and food. Well, we have a large room, and it would certainly hold at least a hundred people comfortably. It's used a lot for parties and things like that. That sounds as if it might be suitable. I've tried various venues, and they're either booked up or they don't hold enough people. Can you tell me when you were thinking of holding the party? I know it's short notice, but we wanted to hold it Saturday week. That's September fifteenth. Let's have a look.、Uh, hmm. Yes, you're in luck. The Mandela Suite is free then. I'll just write that down. M A N D E L. A. And the time. When were you thinking of holding it? In the afternoon, from three thirty p.m. to nine p.m. Yes. Okay. There is no smoking on the premises, and we're only licensed to have soft drinks.、Oh, that's okay. I think I'm happy to go ahead. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions five to ten. Now listen and answer questions five to ten. Can you just give your postcode? Yes, it's P A five seven G J. Fine. And the flat and street number? It's flat number forty, and the street number is thirty-five. Okay, so that's flat forty, thirty-five Beaches Street. Yes, that's right. And a contact number. My landline is two two three two seven nine with the code, but I'll give you my mobile number, which is zero seven eight nine seven two nine three three eight one. Okay, two nine three three eight one. Um, can you tell me how much it will cost? It's quite reasonable, actually. It's a hundred and fifteen pounds for the hire of the room with tables and chairs. But if you want to hire disco equipment, we've got a basic system with speakers and other equipment for twenty-five pounds. But there is no technician around in case anything goes wrong. And of course, it's optional.、Oh, that would save us carting something from home, but maybe we should bring a spare sound system just in case. We've never had any problem with the system, but you might not want to take any chances. What about catering? Well, we had thought of getting everyone bringing something. We have someone who can do catering for nine pounds a head, including the cake if required. That's handy, but it's a lot as we have a fairly tight budget. So you want to go ahead with the booking? Yes, certainly. Okay. I need to take a deposit of thirty pounds, which is refundable. 
The balance needs to be paid two days before the event at the latest. Fine. You can cancel up to two days before, but after that you lose the deposit. We don't intend to cancel, but is there any insurance we can take out? Yes, there's a, a form here somewhere. How much? It's, uh, oh, let me see. It's only nine pounds for the 24 hour period, and that covers you for cancellation, damage, and injury. Well, at least we'd better have a look at it. How would you like to pay the deposit? Cash. I'll just give you a receipt. Uh, there you are. Ten, twenty, thirty. Thirty pounds. Uh, Maria Lincoln. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm really glad I found somewhere. We have been trying to book a place for the past two weeks, so thank you again, and uh, bye for now. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will hear a talk on the radio about grass roofs. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 13. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 13. And now it's straight into the eco hotspot for today's programme. We are in fact going to look at an intriguing trend in recent years in the world of eco-friendly developments. There has been a constant stream of new green products coming onto the market for the environmentally conscious. A new departure, which I feel needs greater attention drawn to it, is the increasing interest in grass roofs. Environmentalists sing the praises of grass roofs as interest in sustainable ecological building has led to the greening of the rooftops of residential and commercial buildings around the world. And what does this type of roof consist of? Instead of tiles, which allow water to run off and create flash flooding, the roof has a waterproof underlay, which is laid over the roof deck. This waterproof layer is then covered with layers for insulation and drainage. Then, on top of the insulation and drainage layer, is added a final layer of soil or crushed stones for the plants and or grass to grow on. The roof can be planted with wildflowers to add colour and life to your rooftop. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 14 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions 14 to 20. As for the benefits of grass roofs, in spring and in summer they are very pretty as flowers spring into bloom. Moreover, in summer, grass roofs are of particular benefit in cities because they keep any building cool by reflecting the sun's rays. In winter, the grass roofs insulate the building helping to prevent heat loss. The roofs require little maintenance and are better than any other roofing material. They encourage biodiversity by attracting bees and birds, 
and they absorb water runoff, which helps prevent flash flooding. In fact, the gravel layer retains 71% of the rainwater that falls, thus helping to prevent flash flooding. In winter, the brown soil is a bit more evident, which can look unattractive if the roofs are not tended carefully. But that is a price worth paying, and I would say that they come highly recommended by those who have them. If you compare grass roofs with tiles, the latter do certainly look very tidy, but at a price to the future of the planet. The main drawbacks of tiles, though, are the water runoff and the absorption of heat from the sun's rays in summer. So, if we are to save the planet from the ecological point of view, tiles do not come recommended. The only roof that I can think of which has similar ecological credentials to the grass roof is the thatched roof. Thatched roofs are good insulators and very attractive, but very pricey and not ideal for cities. How can we make more of our roofs green? That is, how can people be persuaded to install grass roofs? The World Green Roof Conference in Australia was a very good start. At a grass roots level, the best way to raise the profile of grass roofs is to make them trendy by highlighting them in fashionable magazines so that people begin to feel that they cannot do without them. But the idea I like best is holding competitions for the best-designed grass roofs. Next week, Eco Hotspot is going to look at... That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear a female and a male student talking to a female tutor about a self-evaluation form. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Now, Mark and Anna, I have to say that I thoroughly enjoyed your joint presentation on the application of robotics in a non-industrial setting to the group on the 2nd of December, and it is clear that you have both devoted quite a lot of time and effort to it. Have you had a chance to fill in the self-evaluation form for the session? Yeah, we have. So, Mark, what do you think overall? Well, generally, I felt the presentation worked very well. In fact, we seemed to hold the attention of the others throughout. And the pace of delivery was fairly even, as were the range of activities we organised. I agree with Mark, but I'm not sure we were comprehensive or academic enough. No comment, really, except that I don't think there was any question of it not being thorough. I think we were a bit too chatty and too jokey at times, rather than... Formal. OK, what do you think were the best areas? And which do you think can be improved on? Well, everything could have been improved on. I felt very good about the handouts. We'd spent a lot of time putting them together. They had a very professional appearance as we bound them into a booklet. To me, the handouts were the best part, as we had a very extensive bibliography and the booklet seemed to go down well. The booklet you did for the handouts certainly showed you had done a lot of work. But I think that you put too much material into it, and people got distracted by it. Perhaps you could have cut the handouts by about a third. I see. When I come to think about it, maybe you're right. OK. But there were times in the middle of the presentation where things did go a bit astray. 
I think that was my fault when I got the PowerPoint slides out of sequence and I had difficulty getting back on track. Mm. I also think we rated our technical ability too highly, especially when operating under pressure. I had never done a presentation with technical equipment before, so it was a steep learning curve for me in particular. Yes, I think you could have done with a bit more practice with the equipment beforehand. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 27 to 30. What about the next item on the feedback form? The aims and objectives? I think they were very focused and we followed them through well, I think. We wanted to show how Europe was lagging behind other areas of the world. Yeah, I think they were clearly set out. Yes, agreed. No comment there. The diagrams and charts were appropriate. Yes, I have put that too. They did work well in helping to illustrate and break up the presentation by cutting down on the number of words and text on the screen. What about delivery? Well, I think our performance was average. It was difficult to coordinate speaking and presenting the material at the same time. I was quite self-conscious of what I was doing. It was down to a lack of experience. Unfortunately, both of you had the habit of standing in front of the projector, so you kept blocking the image on the screen. To me, this is the area that requires the most improvement. The section on the predictions of the commercial application in the future, I think, appeared a bit haphazard. Uh, to me, it was a weak point of the presentation. And I think that some of the slides could have had fewer words. And we could have done some fancy graphics with the words. If you had to give yourselves a mark overall, how much would you give out of ten? Six, maybe? I'd be happy with that. Though bits were probably nearer a seven. So I'd say a six. Anna, what do you think? I think for me it's perhaps a seven. OK. Did you find the task and the evaluation useful? I think... That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear a talk on local businesses at a university business centre. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. The subject of this evening's talk at the North Bank Business Centre is local businesses in the area surrounding the university and the benefit they bring to the employment prospects of people in the local area, especially young people at the beginning of their career. We established the centre in response to approaches from several business people in the area who had wanted to start up new businesses but who had not managed to find any help locally and did not know where to turn. Moreover, they had all, without exception, 
come up against enormous bureaucratic obstacles. We therefore invited them in as a group to meet the members of the department and the students. Stemming from that is the centre, which now focuses mainly but not exclusively on business startups. Just after the centre was set up, snapshot research conducted by the department over the telephone gave some startling results. The information about local businesses revealed that three out of every ten local business startups that we could collect information on had failed within the first six months, and another five had gone within the year, leaving only two. The most common reasons given for the business's closing were, first, high rents, which are 33% higher than the national average, due to the area being very central. Second, lack of knowledge about grants, basically because of ignorance about how to access them. And thirdly, a lack of business support, because they did not know where to obtain advice from. Since the centre came into existence three years ago, we have helped change this climate of failure. The current statistics show a remarkable turnaround in the fortunes of local businesses. And now, after a year, only two businesses close out of every ten, compared to eight before the centre was set up. Six local businesses are now taking part in a work placement and monitoring scheme, which is of mutual benefit to ourselves and the companies involved. O Foods, a small start-up company with nine employees involved in organic food and based at a local market, has one final year graduate doing a year-long study on improving the stock turnaround. This was a particular problem because the company found that they were losing sometimes up to 30% of their stock. Another start-up is Innovations, which deals with producing video games. This company, which employs only five people, all under the age of 25, is receiving support in attracting business partners and achieving production targets. In the smaller business category, Sampson's Limited, a courier company which is interested in developing a taxi service, is being offered help with their business expansion plans. Another small niche company called Vintage Scooter, which specialises in revamping old scooters, is taking part in a product monitoring scheme, offering customer service up to a year after purchase to check the quality of their restoration. The first of the two medium-sized companies that the scheme is monitoring is Build Limited, which employs 47 people. A comparison of their products and services with other businesses in the area is being carried out by a researcher who is trying to support them in their efforts to extend the company's product range. The last company, Jones Systems, is perhaps the most interesting because it has been the victim of considerable personnel problems which have been affecting the day-to-day -day operations of the company. And so, we are looking at conflict management and team building within the company. To sum up, advisors help the companies look at different business options and models, apply for grants, deal with employment issues, systems creation, and also provide accommodation at the centre to help them start up. E-mentoring for fledgling businesses is also in operation for those who find it difficult to attend the centre personally. The programme is funded by grants from local authorities. That is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.